In general, in the last four years, the generational upgrade of phones has been boring, especially iPhones. And if we want to rank iPhones in terms of boringness, if we don't consider AI, which of course is not available now, iPhone 16 Pro definitely wins the first place. But it's really a lovely phone. This is iPhone 16 Pro review, so let's do it all. As I said, we really shouldn't expect much change. The design is completely the same as the previous generation. If in the previous generation, the model could be recognized due to the size of the lenses, now it is not possible at all, unless you buy new colors and don't use the case. But if you look very carefully, the protrusion of the lens in this generation is more than the lens frame, which is not good at all in terms of resistance, but honestly, it looks good. The size of the phone is only slightly bigger but it is really heavier than the 15 Pro. Of course, I like this, because in addition to being still comfortable, now the screen size is 6.3 inches, which is ideal. The bezel of the screen has become a little narrower. It is noticeable, really narrow, 90% of the front panel is the screen, but I still don't like the dynamic continent on the top. The screen has not changed either, but this is not a problem at all. It is sharp, the colors are accurate, the blacks are deep, and everything is great. I just wish it was brighter. 2000 nits is quite enough, but its competitors go up to 3000 nits. The Chinese have gone even more. It also doesn't have anti-reflective glass like S24 Ultra. Face ID is still on the top and fast and accurate. The speakers are still a stereo, the volume sharpness is excellent, and it has an acceptable bass. If I want to compare it with 15 Pro, I think it is a bit sharper. Satellite connectivity, car crash, Dolby Vision, action button, and every features on the past iPhones are still there. So what has changed now? The first thing you notice is a capacitive virtual button has been added to the right side. Like the iPhone 7, it gives the feeling of compression, but in fact, it is the function of haptic engine. For 90% of people, it only has the function of the shutter button, to show off to their friends. But it's really useful if you take photos and videos horizontally and you're a bit of a geek. It takes a photo with one tap and with two half taps, which is usually difficult at first, a menu opens, where you can move between the menus and zoom, increase the contrast, or adjust the photography style by moving the finger. It is not a game changer, but it can be useful. Like every year, the hardware has been upgraded, A18 Pro with 8GB of RAM, which considering the experience of previous iPhones that were 6GB and the superiority of iOS in app optimization could be predicted to be excellent, and as such, you will not really have a problem with RAM. In terms of raw performance, not much upgrade has happened. However, everything is a snappy and fast and a smooth, and as always, you will not have any problems in terms of processing. And it is the fastest phone so far. But last year, the overheating problem was so bad that it seems like you have iPhone 13 hardware. But now, this problem has been solved to a large extent. And now we can say, that we can play Resident Evil on iPhone. The most important thing improved in the iPhone is the powerful 45 teraflops NPU, which promises that, probably like the Pixel 9, many AI processes such as image generation, sorting photos, and editing are processed inside the phone and very quickly. According to what Apple has shown us, Apple Intelligent seems to act like Google's Gemini, like an AI assistant and Siri will no longer be just a voice assistant and has a different appearance. But none of this exists now. I don't promise, no one can promise, but I think it will be as good as Galaxy AI and Pixels. And because I myself am a ChatGPT user and Apple has cooperated with OpenAI, maybe it will be better. I just hope. The iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max battery was great. The 14 fell short, the 15 was better than the 14, but it still couldn't beat the 13, 
but now 16 Pro Max has the best battery among iPhones and can charge a little more than a full day in some heavy usage. However, the Pro model has not improved much, but it will be with you for a whole day. At the event, I only heard about the 25W MagSafe, which is a good news and charged the phone in 70 minutes, but it seems that now it supports 45W wire charging and charges in less than one hour. Of course, not only there is no charger in the box, but the cable that is there is not fast charging and is not even USB 3.0. Pro model camera can be said to be completely new. 48 megapixel wide camera that uses a new sensor, 48 megapixel ultra wide camera, and 5x prescope camera, which was only for the Pro Max model in the previous generation. The selfie camera is the same 12 megapixels with autofocus. The photos are amazing in daylight. First of all, the shutter speed is amazing, and the photos are saved in the default 24 megapixel, but with a size close to a 12 megapixel photo. Excellent detail and sharpness, wide dynamic range, colors are close to reality, it's just a lack of contrast, like all iPhones, which you can correct with photographic style, which is now more practical. Portrait photos are also lovely, although due to the size of the sensor, you have some blur effect in normal photos too. Subject separation is great, face processing is done well, but Samsung's background blur is more natural. From the iPhone 14, I really like Apple's night mode. In addition to the excellent detail and dynamic range, the colors do not change much, and the shutter speed is fast enough. In general, they have a more natural feel. 16 Pro Ultrawide easily has the rank 1. Detail and sharpness are excellent compared to competitors, the dynamic range is wide enough, and the colors are close to the wide lens. Although, all this happens in good light, like other ultrawide lenses. Also, the macro mode is amazing like the 15 Pro. 3x zoom is a bit more practical in my opinion. However, due to the closeness of the lenses, zooming is very smooth, you get good detail and sharpness, the dynamic range is not like other lenses, but it is good, and the color processing is similar to the wide camera. The advantage it has is that it can be used in non-ideal light too. Selfies do not change much. Great detail, good dynamic range, I like Google's face processing more, but the iPhone also does it right, and its noise control is still great. Whether you are a fan of Apple or not at all, I am not in either of these two categories, but in terms of videography, iPhones are unrivaled, and now the distance is even greater. The phone hits up less, the processing of videos has noticeably improved, and now you can record 4K 120fps Dolby Vision video which is really amazing, and if you don't have a problem with the file size, which you probably have, it's the best. The microphones are now 4, and in addition to being significantly better than the competitors and iPhone 15 Pro, you have the ability to switch between sound modes after recording. Of course, the feature is not very new. In general, there is no doubt that the iPhone 16 Pro is really a good phone and worth buying. But if you have iPhone 15 or even 14 Pro, I promise you are not going to release a lot of dopamine by buying 16 Pro. If you also have 13 Pro, there is still no Apple intelligence. Maybe it's better to wait. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, like it. And if you like my content, subscribe to my channel. Goodbye, see you next video.